<laughs> uh, welcome to the show. Sorry, we're laughing about the the emails that we did at the end of the podcast. You got to listen to that bit. Um, come and see me live. Uh, I I just did Sydney. Thank you if you came. Uh, then I'm going to Newcastle on, on the 19th of May. After that, it's Gold Coast. Then Brisbane shows have been announced. Brisbane is selling like crazy. That's going to fill up by them now. Then we've got Sunshine Coast, Hobart, Launceston, Adelaide, uh, Ballarat, Warnable, Shepparton, and to be announced very soon, London and Manchester in UK. That's coming soon. Loosebeers.com. Enjoy the show. Stick around for the end. It's a banger. How about no, you crazy Dutch bastard? Um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 336 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. And uh, I had an excellent weekend. I had an, I had an excellent weekend uh, because I, I figured out that uh, two of my biggest fans are Drake and Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> now, I don't know if you remember, last Sunday I put out a podcast where I talked about the Drake and Kendrick beef and I said it was the most boring rap beef that I've ever seen in my life. I recorded that after they released the first two songs. Uh, and in my little rant, all right, I said, would one of you please shoot the other? <laughs> now, only a couple days after that podcast clip came out, Drake's house got shot up. One of his security guards has been shot. Now, I would like to reiterate, boys, that I was joking. Okay? I was joking. I will also I would also like to say that it has gotten a lot more exciting. So, you know, I'm not going I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and say that it is that it's good that you guys are now shooting guns at each other, but but what I will say is we are quite entertained. You guys did step it up and thank you for your listenership. Um but it would be nice if you guys you know, as two of the most successful rappers on planet Earth, it would it would be nice if you guys you know, supported me on Patreon, bought a t-shirt, something like that, just to show a little bit of love because I feel like I I gave so much to you and I helped you create the most revolutionary rap beef of the last, you know, 10 years and I haven't seen much for it, but that's okay. It's gotten pretty, pretty fucking crazy. Have you been, you're, you're completely checked out of this. I only heard about the um the pedophile thing that Drake said. Like it, the self, the self admit. It's that so funny. so funny. If you, if you make like a, like a five six minute song, and over four minutes of that song is bars about how you're not a pedophile, <laughs> you lost the rap beef. You lost. You know, if 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 I'm if I'm in my notepad thinking, hmm, what rhymes with pedophile? You lost. <laughs> And and you're not like using it to call the other guy a pedophile. If you're not going, here's why you're a pedophile. That's fine. If you're if you're one of the lines, can we let me pull up the lyrics here for Drake's because we got to go through the lyrics. It is so funny. Okay, Drake diss lyrics because here's the thing. I thought this might be a controversial opinion. I thought with the first four tracks, it was kind of even. But Kendrick just really demolished this man. But more so than, like, Kendrick didn't even beat Drake. Drake lost because he because of this most recent track where he just fucked up. Kendrick put out a, a rap basically calling him and a bunch of his associates pedophiles. Um, all right. Here we go. I'm getting into the lyrics here. Uh, the first verse is, like, pretty good. So Kendrick kind of put out a song saying that Drake has an 11-year-old daughter that he's not parenting. Uh, and when Kendrick put that song out, I was like, what the fuck? This is crazy. And this again, this is what I said last week. I said, the last good rap beef was when Pusha T exposed Drake for having a son that he wasn't parenting. You need to do that. Kendrick did that. And then I said, would one of you please shoot the other? Kendrick did that. So maybe Drake doesn't listen. Maybe it's just Kendrick. I feel like if if out of the two of them, Kendrick would, would is much more likely to be a listener of Spearhead Sundays because 
between Drake and Kendrick, it's pretty clear which one of them is on the spectrum, and it's it's not Drake. Um, all right. So Drake's this. He comes out and uh, he says, uh, "I'm finding it here." He goes, "All right, we plotted for a week, and then we fed you the information. A daughter that's 11 years years old. I bet he takes it." We thought about giving you a fake name or a destination, but you so thirsty, you're not concerned with investigation. So that blew my mind of, oh my God, Drake fed fake information to Kendrick about a daughter that he didn't parent. That's fucking amazing that Kendrick fell for it. This is going to make Kendrick look really stupid. And then I thought about that a little bit more and I was like, the only reason that Drake managed to convince Kendrick, that he's a deadbeat father is because he was a deadbeat father. <laughs> like, it's like you can't be like, oh, I tricked you into thinking that I had abandoned and neglected a child when you'd already been exposed for doing that with your actual son. Like, gotcha. I knew you would believe that I'm a bad father because of my history as as a as an absent father. You know, that that tracks. But even then, I thought that was pretty good. You know, I love that. Tricking people into saying things that are not true. That's my bag. Loved it. But then the rest of the song, right? That's about the maybe the first 40 seconds. He's like, I tricked you into telling people I had a fake daughter. You do, your sources are incorrect. Gotcha. Because Kendrick's song was all about having rats and moles in Drake's operation, which probably turned out to be manipulated by Drake. So I was like, Drake's one. But then the rest of the song, and it's like a six-minute song, is all about why he's not a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, you would think that like uh, like that part of the song would be, would be the last time he mentions underage girls. <laughs> but the rest of the song uh, is uh, is the rest. Okay. So now he goes. Now he goes. Uh, now he starts talking about it. Okay. <clears throat> The Epstein angle was the shit I expected. <laughs> now, now, if you start an argument with someone and they go, you're a fucking pedophile, and your response is, oh, I knew you were going to call me a pedophile. <laughs> You've lost. You lost. Oh, I knew you were going to compare me to, to world famous child trafficker, Jeffrey Epstein, I knew it. Why did you know that? Why did you suspect that was coming up? Drake, was, is there anything you would like to tell us? Um, and then he goes, okay. Then, he, then he, he's referencing one of uh, Kendrick's songs here. Mother I, Mother Ah, wait a second. That's the one record where you say you got molested. Oh, fuck me. I just made the whole connection. This is about to get so depressing. This is trauma from your own confessions. This is when your father leaves you home with no protection, so neglected. That's why these pedophile raps and shit you so obsessed with, it's so excessive. Oh, so Drake's like, oh, you hate pedophiles just because you were molested. Well, I don't, I, I don't, um, <laughs> I don't not hate pedophiles because I wasn't molested. Drake, I don't, I, I like, I, I feel like there's more reasons to dislike pedophiles than you personally being molested. <laughs> oh, you just don't like pedophiles because you were molested by one. Oh, so you don't, you don't not like, is, you like them, or you feel neutral on them? Like, what's, what are you trying to say here, Drake? Also, what's really funny about this is getting into a, a little bit into inside baseball but the song that drake is referencing where kendrick admits to being molested in that song the song is actually about how kendrick's mother was molested and then because she was so traumatized by that she was certain that kendrick also was but he was not so the whole song is about like generational trauma being passed down where Kendrick is traumatized by being accused of 
being molested and not being believed when he said that he hadn't, even though truthfully he had, he was not a victim of it. It was just his mother passing down her trauma. So Drake's just completely misunderstood the song <laughs> uh, and really made that clear, which is very funny. Oh, uh, <laughs> That's why these pedophile raps and shit you're so obsessed with, it's so excessive. They're acting like it's so aggressive, but you just never known affection. I don't want to diss you anymore. This really got me second guessing. So he, he's already giving up. I don't want to do this anymore. Please stop. It hurts. Uh, meanwhile, in every single club, every single house party, every single event that has a DJ, they're playing a song where the entire audience goes certified lover boy certified pedophile <laughs> right so right now across the world people are dancing to a song where they call you a pedophile and he's like oh, i knew you were gonna call me a pedophile. <laughs> i don't want to diss you anymore and now this is the i i reckon that this is the craziest rap bar from drake all right Listen to this. I never been with no one underage, but now I understand why this angle that you really mess with. Just for clarity, I feel disgusted. I'm too respected. If I was fucking young girls, I promise I'd have been arrested. I'm way too famous for this shit you just suggested. Um, Jeffrey Epstein, Rolf Harris, uh, Jimmy Savile, um, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. No, I don't know about that one. <laughs> Bill Cosby. Um, uh, Prince Andrew. Allegedly. Jeffrey Epstein. No, I'm just saying names. I'm not. Michael Jackson. I'm not asserting anything. Michael Jackson, depending on your. Like, <laughs> saying I'm too famous to be a pedophile really doesn't hold up when you have a look at some of the most famous people on earth fucking kids and getting away with it <laughs> like oh if i was having sex with kids why haven't i been arrested i don't know how did jeffrey epstein get away with it for so long and then when he did finally get arrested because of just i don't know it just became global knowledge on social media how come none of the clients he was supplying kids to got arrested Somehow Ghislaine's been arrested for child trafficking, but there are no customers. Mm. Who are the customers? How do you traffic something that no one's buying? You know, like that is a fucking hilarious bar. I mean, fucking Weinstein just got off. Not, I'm not talking about when he was getting off with the victims. I'm talking about like he literally just had his court case overturned. I'm way too famous to be a pedophile. I would have been arrested by now. Uh, no, you wouldn't. Also, there's footage of Drake kissing a 17-year-old girl on stage. After clarifying that she's 17. He gets this girl up. This is true. This is from a few years ago. He gets a girl up on stage. He's like, damn, you're so gorgeous. You're so attractive, blah, blah. Hitting on her, flirting with her in front of an audience. And he goes, how old are you? She's like, I'm 17. He's like, oh, no, don't say that. Everyone goes, whoa. Normal person will be like, oh, fuck, get her off stage. Mm -hmm. I've made a horrible mistake. He goes, why are you so thick <laughs> if you're 17? And then kisses her. Look, if, I've, if, I, if, is there, if there's video footage of me kissing a 17-year-old girl after confirming her age in front of a live audience and calling her thick, I'm not getting into a <laughs> rap beef with anyone. I, in in fact, I might even just I might even just stop rapping. Um, but yeah, I'm too famous to be a pedophile is so funny. Um, have you met every any Minecraft YouTuber? Um, I never been with no one underage, but now I understand why this the angle you really mess with. Just for clarity, I feel disgusted. I'm too respected. If I was fucking young girls, I promise I'd have been arrested. Uh, but I'm way too famous for the shit you just suggested. Um, and then uh, then he goes on talking about how some other guys maybe got his girlfriend pregnant, Drake's girlfriend pregnant, Kendrick's girlfriend pregnant. And 
Then this is the other fucking crazy thing. He goes, I'll slit your throat with a razor and do Rick Ross air like that one flight from Malaysia. I'm your baby mama's screensaver. Only fucking with Whitney's, Kendrick, Kendrick's ex-girlfriend's name, only fucking with Whitney's, not Millie Bobby Brown's. I'd never look twice at no teenager. Again, there's footage of him kissing a 17-year-old girl on stage. But that's going to be the craziest response to someone calling you a pedophile. Like someone's like, you're a pedophile. I never had sex with Millie Bobby Brown. Well, who said anything about Millie Bobby Brown? <laughs> like I didn't say anything about her. You're the one bringing her up. You like little girls. I've never touched Millie Bobby Brown. Um, <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about? And you know what's really funny about this? That's the second time he's denied having sexual relations with Millie Bobby Brown in a song. <laughs> That's, did no one in Drake's camp read the lyrics and go, maybe don't spend four minutes of your song denying being a pedophile. Maybe say, maybe say no once and then cut the other 60 verses about not fucking kids. Certified lover boy, certified pedophile. I never touch Millie Bobby Brown. <laughs> Who the fuck said anything about her? Do you know the story with him and uh, Millie Bobby Brown from Stranger Things? When when she was a teenager, he was a friend. Yeah, when she was, I think when she was fourteen, yeah, and he was thirty two. He was texting her all yeah. the time, and according to her, giving her advice about boys. Yeah, yeah, I remember seeing an interview with her. And giving her advice and, and being really good friends and texting her things like, I miss you. <sighs> Creepy. Which is real groomer language and behavior. And some other people uh, spoke up about it because some people were like, some people, and it's, you know, it is, it is like a fair question of like, oh, can an adult not have any kind of relationship with a child that isn't creepy? Like, uh, and which is which is like a fair question, but also come I think feel like comes from a naive place. Like that comes from like when you look at your own intentions with kids and like, oh well I've spoken to fifteen year olds at McDonald's when they served me and I wasn't fucking weird about it. You tell you say you can't ever talk to a kid without it being weird. But like that's not what's going on in everyone's head, I think is what people are saying. Of like there's no real reason for Drake to have a relationship with a fourteen year old girl who is not related to him he's doesn't have any working relationship with it's just suspicious or curious but some other people pointed out that if drake why is drake only talking to millie bobby brown on that show <laughs> right whereas he could have actually a much much better and more genuine real mentor like relationship with uh the black kid on that show who I believe oh, yeah. is Canadian oh. and is also a child actor like Drake was. Oh, yeah. He so, was the wheelchair guy on Degrassi. Yeah. yeah. So, like, if if you're trying to be a mentor, why not the kid that probably really looks up to you? Because you guys have kind of the same career path, it seems, at the moment. Because he also makes music, this kid. Oh. So, if Drake's going to mentor anyone or give advice to anyone on on what to do with their career, surely it's the black Canadian child actor kid who wants to be a musician and not fucking Millie Bobby Brown, who they s seemingly have nothing in common. But I, but we haven't seen the text. Caleb M McLaughlin. That's right. Is he Canadian? I want to be sure. Someone, I, I feel like someone on Twitter said he was Canadian. American. Okay. But it still stands. Black child actor wants to do music. They have so much more in common. Um. All right. Uh, Finn Wolfhard, which is one of the main characters, is Canadian and a musician. I think if you just got them, the I've got up. them mixed up. But yeah. you've got the two leads mixed up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm like I'm like fucking Drake, just skimming over the lyrics of something and being like, oh, he was he was molested. Like, no, if you listen, if you actually listen to the song, and I went and I listened to the song, and it's it's so obvious that Kendrick is. Like was was the one who was like 
he, he, the song is about his mother being traumatized for being molested and Kendrick being traumatized because she did not believe that he was not molested. Like that's, and it's so obvious. You don't have to read between the lines. Like Kendrick says very clearly, I was telling the truth that I wasn't, but no one believed me. <laughs> um, all right. So, and then the, uh, the, the, I, I really want to play the last bit of his uh, track because it's so funny. He has like at the end of all of this where he basically spends four minutes like pleading with the world to be like, I'm please, I'm not a pedophile. All of those, all of, all of that footage you have. I've never looked twice at no teenager and then people like literally posting on Twitter him looking five times at a teenager and then kissing her. <laughs> but after this song where he spends about, yeah, like fucking four minutes talking about why he's not a pedophile. He then busts out like a, an anime villain speech at the end of it. And it's so fucking funny. Here, let me play it. Yo. I'm not gonna lie, this shit was um, some good exercise. Like, <laughs> it's good to get out, get the pen work done. You would be a. Everyone's calling you a pedophile. He's like, yeah, this is good exercise. Where the competitor if I was really a predator. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would be a. Uh, a worthy com competitor if I was really a predator. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> if I was a pedophile, this would be a good fight. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that is that actually is really funny though. Like I would love to I would love to see um I would love to see that said at like a weigh in at a UFC match. <laughs> the only way you could beat me in this fight. The only way you're taking the heavyweight belt away from me is if I fuck kids. I was like, whoa, who's talking about that? Where are you bringing that up? And when I say I hit your back, it's a lot safer. I promise. Yo, I'm not going to lie. This shit was um, some good exercise. Like, it's good to get out, get the pen work. It's good a cigarette. Anime. You would be a worthy competitor if I was really a predator and you weren't fucking lying to every blogger and editor, but... It is what it is. You definitely got this shit burnt the fuck out, though. Like, you got 10 more records to drop. The one before the last one, we finessed you into telling a story that doesn't even exist. That is funny. And then you go and drop the West Coast one to try and cover that up. I would like that one. That, that, that would be some shit I could dance to if you wasn't. Keep in mind, it goes on for another minute of him just speaking like he's lost. <laughs> He's, he's really just kind of going, all right, that's, that's enough. Stop. <laughs> You're a pedophile. I never touched Millie Bobby Brown. That's awesome. Who said anything about her? I hadn't even brought that up yet. Kendra's like, fuck, I didn't even, that was going to be in the next song. Um, anyway, so congratulations to the boys. I think it's over now. And what, what also is really funny is Drake puts this out. And the caption that he put out with it was like, we know you're going to drop in six minutes. Like kind oh, of, no. we know you're going to drop a song six minutes after this one. And then Kendrick just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the last song that's been out for days. <laughs> and like that's funny. the biggest problem that Drake has now is with every song that had been released so far, it was like, what's Kendrick going to say to this? Oh, what's Drake going to say to that? Oh, how's Kendrick going to respond to this? Then Drake puts this song out and everyone's going, oh, Drake lost. <laughs> <laughs> like no one's like, what's Kendrick going to say to this? Everyone's just like, oh, he spent four minutes talking about how he's not a pedophile. Drake lost. And the biggest bomb that Drake dropped, which is, we lied to you and we fed you fake information that Kendrick made pretty much a whole song about. No one gives a fuck at all because everyone's like, okay, yeah, cool. You tricked him. Yeah. But what's with all that? The pedophile. <laughs> so what you're saying is you're, you're quite crafty and you have very questionable 
relationships with child actors. Interesting. We don't care. Anyway, um, if you would like uh, early access to the show and these clips, uh, it's time to support us on Patreon. I've got I've, Keelan's just handed me something very, very cool. So earlier in the year, at the start of the year, um, I couldn't pay my mortgage, and I said, ah, "Help!" And then uh, you guys did by. Uh, <laughs> I mean that's what happened. Yeah. Let's not let's not mince words or try to. I was drowning, and then I said, <laughs> and I was reaching for a lifeline, and <laughs> I can't breathe. I can't swim. And uh, and and the lifeline we came up with was uh, with was getting a bunch more Patreon supporters to uh, sign up to the annual tier, which was just paying up front. You get a discount, and we said everyone who signs up to the annual tier will get uh, the very first poster that I ever made with uh, the brilliant designer, Matteo Mazzella, for my first show, Cyberbully Superstar, and we just got it printed. It took ages because I made the promise. I was like, we're going to print that poster up, and then a bunch of you guys signed up, and I was like, cool, I'll pull that, that, uh, that file for the poster out of one of my, um, my, out of my Dropbox or something, and it wasn't there. And I had to – this is from like – when is this from? Like 2014 maybe. I think 2015. I but I think this was designed. It was like early 2015 or late 2014 when it was actually made. Yep. Um. And I just I just never saved the file, so I had to go through like a decade of emails <laughs> trying to find it because we only ever printed up like I feel like I only ever printed up like 150 total of these because uh, it was my first ever tour. I didn't sell very many tickets for it. Um. But I ended up finding it. And I was like, fuck, I don't even know if this is the right thing. So we have to do a test print. Anyway, we've done a test print. It looks fucking awesome. Uh, and I don't even have one of these. And uh, we're going to be sending these out to all of the people who signed up annually. And uh, we're going to give another chance to uh, the people that are new listeners or people who uh, thought they missed out. You haven't missed out. Um, uh, over the next two weeks, two, three weeks, if you sign up to the annual tier on Patreon, you're going to get this poster sent out to you as uh, what else? And it will be signed. Um, and yeah, you get the early access and everything. White for border won't be there. Be the, yeah. The white border is too big. We're going to get that trimmed down. So yeah, this is actually so fucking cool. Uh, so many memories on this, on this poster and, uh, and they'll be signed. Jeez, it's violent. Jeez, it's a violent poster. Every, I, the people who. Jeez, I'm, I seem to be the only person on this poster that has a career anymore. <laughs> And that's actually facts. Like even Tracy Grimshaw has retired. My God, I'm the only. I'm looking at all these all these faces. I'm the only one left. There's Adrian Van Oyens here. Um, who's this guy? Uh, Damos. I think he streams Pokemon Go. <laughs> he does. Isn't he yeah. a big Pokemon, Pokemon Go streamer. Go. He was like a big Christian guy for a while, and then he was like, yeah. "Fuck God, I'm going to play with Japanese monsters." Um, and then the, the Janoskians are here and then Pinga Pete, even Pinga Pete, he, I haven't seen him for ages. I haven't seen that guy for years. Um, Susan McLean's there with her book. Even, even this guy from Media Watch, he's retired. Oh, you're kidding. Have yeah. You? Yeah, he has. Yeah. They replaced him with a guy that looks exactly like him. That's why oh, you think he's still working. That's right. Uh, and MC Grabbins ad pay. He hasn't released music for years. So it really is just me, but even then I've retired the costume. And you know what? Even with the costume, the creator of Dragon Ball died. So this is, this post was actually a terrible omen. Um, the Herald Sun, no one reads that anymore. Anyway. Um, well, what I was going to say, the people I get all our posters printed through, yeah. are like family, uh, related family. Yeah. And every single time I, I'll send off the email going, hey, can we get a test print of this? And I always get back a, are you sure? Because the 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 post is so graphic or it's so fucked up. Remember the the one we did with the crazy frog, how it had a little penis on it. They didn't like that. <laughs> they were like, "Are you sure you want to get this printed?" Do they know what like what it's for? I think they have a vague understanding, but yeah, they they're always just double checking. That makes me. Is this the correct file? Is this what is this? I do you really? They're not. They're not going. Is this quality good enough? They're going. Is this something that should exist? <laughs> is this something that anyone should put on their wall? Yes. And the answer is probably not, but you can have it on yours at <laughs> yeah. patreon.com slash loosebeers. 
and you get uh, early access to all episodes and uh, patron episode every single week. Uh, and you'll help me pay my, pay my mortgage, which which we love. Oh, um, oh, so and, and what we worked out last week, remember on the Patreon podcast that you haven't missed an episode in twenty eight weeks. That's right, twenty eight weeks, not a single missed episode. And we worked it out. We're talking about it on on the Patreon. We worked out that that's the ever since the inception of this show, that's probably the biggest hot streak. We did want to ask actually, what is the Second longest streak of weekly episodes. Like we we're only theorizing that this is the longest I've ever gone without missing a single episode. But I mean, we've been doing it for years, and I've been doing it for years before you came on board. I could have been pretty good with Sundays for a while, maybe even when it started. So we want to know from you. Surely there's some guy. Or girl out there that has the fucking attention span to look at the dates of the last 330 episodes and figure out my previous hot streak. Because if there is a longer hot streak, I want to write it on the wall behind us and we're going to smash <laughs> it this year. Because I made a promise this year that I was going to do uh, I was going to do a hundred kilometers in the pool and I wasn't going to miss a single episode of Spearhead Sundays. And I have really, really not been swimming very much at all. So I really got to redeem myself by not missing an episode this year because I won't let this one go go the way of the pool. We are going to step that up, the pools. We're going to get back into it. I've been into it. Keelan has been, been uh, unfortunately, been fucking crushing it. Um, but I'm going to Sydney uh, next weekend, uh, or this weekend, sorry, and uh, I'm in a hotel. And it's got a 25 meter lap pool. Oh, I'm So I reckon, hopefully, depending on the opening hours, I reckon I could do two a day for the whole time. I'm there. <laughs> That'll be eight swims, which will almost kind of catch me up a little bit. Not really. No, not at all. No, not really. I was supposed to be swimming. <laughs> every, sec- every second day almost. Yeah. Twice a week. That's not every second day. That's, look, guys, I'm going to get back on top of it and I'm going to have the most aquatic rig on earth. <clears throat> um, anyway... The funniest thing happened to me the other day. How long have we been going here, Keelan? 30. Huh? 30 minutes. Okay. So this is so funny. We're, pr- we're probably going to make a video about this. But I uh, have been posting about, obviously, my jaw surgery and stuff. I've been posting my progress as I've been going along in the jaw surgery Reddit because I just noticed that there, when I was really anxious about it, there wasn't many people keeping that Reddit updated with their progress in an easy to understand way. And that would have been really helpful for, help, help, helpful for me. So I've been doing that there. And a month ago, 29 days ago, I posted my braces are off the photo of me, that really nice one where I look like a giga Chad. Uh, and also my before and afters. And everyone in the jaw surgery Reddit is like, oh, well done, blah, blah, blah. This is cool. Ask me a bunch of questions. I'm trying to respond to them. Very positive. I did that a month ago. And then I just completely forgot about it. Now, Reddit, I didn't know this, is a really, really, really big community for the looks maxing incels that uh, I thought was kind of just a community on TikTok where all these like kids basically are obsessed with mewing and are obsessed with like facial dynamics and and, uh, cancel tilt and um, mewing and jaws and all this kind of bullshit you know what it is and we're going to make a video about this i was talking about it with keelan and i've i've thought about it a lot and 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 i see this stuff and i go finally body dysmorphia for teen boys that's what it is is before you know back in like 2006 to 2012 that was just for teen girls it was body dysmorphia it was anorexia eating disorders self-harm all that kind of stuff stemmed from basically girls seeing unrealistic body standards and starving themselves, right? But that's kind of, kind of, for the most part, at least culturally gone away. And now we've got it for teen boys. That's equality. That's equality. Now teen boys look in the mirror and they, and they look at their own cancel tilt and they start to have panic attacks. Or they analyze themselves. Or I've seen like the, the cancel tilt facial face, feet, face filter on TikTok and... What's the cancel tilt? Uh, I don't know too much about it. Cancel tilt is, is um, so you've got your eyes and you've got the, the outer corners of your eyes 
And if the corners of your eyes are tilted downwards, so your eyes tilt this way and that way, if they tilt downwards, that's bad. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that means you're ugly. So, oh. and there's like a, there's a proper, there's a proper ratio where I think it's like from, from the inner bit of your eye to the outer bit of your eye, they should be relatively straight or kind of tilted up a little bit. And those are hunter eyes. You've got hunter eyes and that's what makes an attractive man. And cantle tilt is something that these looks maxing people have hyper focused on. And that's really sad because that's one of the only things that you cannot change at all, not even with surgery. So it's like this thing where people will look at themselves or other people and they'll go ugly, never going to make it. And you, and you can never fix it. At least the girls with anorexia were trying to, you know, they could do something about it. They could become skinnier. <laughs> you know, you look at your mirror, you go, oh, my cantle tilt's fucked. No. Um, yeah, let's look at the, what is the definition of cantle tilt? Um, negative cantle tilt is bad. Okay. What is a negative cantle tilt? Positive denotes a slanting upwards of the eye and negative denotes a slanting downwards. Traditionally, the upward tilt is considered an attractive feature. Um, so, but here's the thing, like a negative cantle tilt, here we go. I'm 14 and I have a negative cantle tilt. Is this normal? Can I fix it? <laughs> like, wh like why is a 14 year old boy looking at his eyes and going, I'm just so ugly. And the answer is social media and TikTok has poisoned mm -hmm. boys minds. Whereas previously that was just for girls. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's a step forward on, on equality. I mean, I, I mean, probably a step backwards. Ideally you would like to uplift girls, but instead we've just <laughs> like, like, uh, actually girls have kind of been uplifted a little bit. I feel like there's a lot more bo body positivity for women. And then, uh, men are just going, looking at their fucking eye shape and, uh, becoming suicidal. Um, but anyway, right. This brings me to this post that I made on the jaw surgery Reddit. So the jaw surgery subreddit is actually quite good. And everyone who's posting like their before and afters and everyone's is, is, is for the most part there for medical reasons like me. Um, however, the surgery that I got is also a cosmetic surgery. Obviously, look at me, I'm gorgeous. Okay. Um, but that's not the reason I did it. In fact, I've said it many times, the way that I feel now compared to how I felt before the surgery, if I came out looking uglier, I would be happy because it was about health for me and I feel fucking amazing. And, and also if I went through these awful, expensive, really terrible surgeries just to look better, I would feel so fucking silly after getting all the way through it and go, I was, I, I would look at myself and I would go, I look better. Why the fuck did I do that? <laughs> that was horrible. That's how I like the only reason I'm stoked that I did it is because of how sick I was and how healthy I am now. Um, so this, because this jaw surgery is more of like a health thing and more of like a, Hey, look at my teeth. Like what's wrong with me? Do like, why can't I breathe? Do you think I have this issue? It's more like diagnosis and updates of the surgical process for health reasons. But because of all of this looks maxing stuff, it's kind of got an infested with incel 15, 16, 15 to 19 year old kids who think they're really ugly and they'll post a photo of themselves going, do I need jaw surgery? As in, do I look so ugly that I need to have jaw surgery? And everyone's going to be like, how's your breathing? And people go, oh, I'm breathing fine. What do you mean? And they're like, okay, well, you, you don't need jaw surgery. All right. You're, you're fucking 15. Like, relax. You're, you're, you're about to go through puberty. Also, even if you look like that, you're fine. Like they're just the most uh, offensively, unugly looking people ever you know just like a person who looks at themselves and goes oh, i'm ugly and they're just like a guy <laughs> so anyway i posted my before and after uh in the jaw surgery thing it gets like it goes well in for the subreddit someone shares that i don't even know you do this someone shares that post into another subreddit r slash ugly <laughs> 
And it's a subreddit for self-described ugly people to complain about how awful their life is because they're so ugly that they can't participate in society properly because of how hideous they are. It's right? Very sad. How it's very sad. However, I had a look through this subreddit and I had a look at some of the photos. They're, and they're all self described people. They're not going, look how life is, look how bad life is for this other ugly motherfucker. They're all going, I'm so hideous that I can't get a job, like type shit. But all the photos they posted themselves in there, they're just like normal looking bloke. Right? And what's really funny is that someone else has shared me in there and the title of this is <laughs> An Amazing Transformation. Wow. <laughs> like this is all caps, super, super sarcastic. An Amazing Transformation. Wow. I'm sure his life is amazing now and everyone thinks he worked for years on his personality. Basically going, look how fucking ugly this guy was. And now that he's handsome, I bet his life is great. <laughs> and, bro, all of the comments are having a full-on debate over whether or not my before picture is ugly. <laughs> Some people are going, he's not even ugly enough to be in this subreddit. Why would you post it? And then other people are going, ah, he's clearly very ugly. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny it's amazing what a shower a haircut and basic hygiene can do for you <laughs> slash s sarcastic <laughs> like they're just projecting like they just got they've just seen me my before and gone oh that guy's so fucking ugly his life was, must have been shit everyone would have hated him because he was so fucking ugly like me and then they saw the after like oh now he's beautiful and handsome everyone probably fucking loves him his life is perfect now, like it would be if I could afford the jaw surgery. Leave the poor guy alone. Huh? No one's bothering him. We are praising him for having a successful surgery and how he how attractive he is now. <laughs> that's really funny. Maybe that's not the impression that your title is giving. And then they've gone, how? I'm saying he became better looking so that people will wrongfully just be like, oh my God, something's so alluring about him. His energy, his charisma, when it's literally just his face got better. The title is intended to mock those who wrongfully give better looking people credit for being good or likable people when being better looking makes people perceive you as a better person. Whereas they tell us to work on our personality for years, like us uglies. But what's really funny about that is I was ugly for 10 years and had a very successful career in the... Why did I say hat? <laughs> <laughs> I have, but when I was ugly, ugly me did 10 years in the public eye, on social media, on stage, as a comedian. I had a very successful relationship. And before that relationship, I had a very successful sex life. Like those were all things that I was doing when I when I had my ugly face. And all with my personality. My whole career and everything that I have is thanks to my personality and because I managed to be funny. Probably because I was quite ugly. But <laughs> these people are like, oh, yeah. People just say that I need to get a personality, but it's actually because I'm ugly. No, cunt, you need a personality. Your looks are not the end of the world. It's so funny that they have no idea that me being who I am completely debunks their entire argument about themselves. But then here's, here's where they start um, arguing about whether or not I'm ugly. And this is when, this is when like, I think what's really interesting about these ugly subreddits and all of these looks maxi incels and all these people that like really, really judge cantle tilts and specific spatial features and try to put... Like, a beautiful person is not a fucking graph. Like, it's not something you can figure out mathematically. You know what I mean? Like, there are some general... Like, obviously, there's generally, like, commonalities and, and things like that. Like, generally, like, a strong jaw is an attractive thing. And, like, uh, uh, you know, big eyes in a woman is a beautiful thing. But you can have those features or you can have traditionally unattractive features 
and still be a really fucking beautiful person because it's not individual. It's not what I'm trying to say is it's not a fucking science. Like a beautiful face is not a something you break down to a scientific um, equation. Like that, um, that Anna Taylor Joy girl, her eyes are really far apart. So if you put her, her eyes into the fucking cantle tilt filter or like, is this person attractive.com? She probably scored quite badly because her features are like very different to what is we consider to be like traditionally beautiful. But when you look at her face and you take her in, she's fucking gorgeous. But mathematically, she's not like a, a beautiful face is not a, a certain range of acceptable distances and measurements. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's an episode of Malcolm in the Middle where Reese, uh, his face lines up perfectly with what a beautiful face is. Yeah. So he starts entering all these beauty competitions and at the very end he gets told it's like, yeah, you've got a very beautiful face if you are a woman. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. like using all the mathematic equations to make sure his eyes are in the same. Yeah, it is. And I actually, there there was a, there's a website called, um, uh, well, I was talking to you about it, I think. It's called like incel.com or something. And it's one of those facial rating generator websites, right? And you can upload a photo of yourself and it detects where your eyes are and your nose are and your chin and everything. And then it'll give you a rating and it'll go, your eyes are really good. Your nose is really bad or whatever it is. Mm. What's really funny is I uploaded my before and my after into it and it got all the, the, the points correct. But it said my after was like less attractive. <laughs> and it's like, that's so clearly not true because when you look at my face, you can see that I look different. And, but, but if you look at my face mathematically, I guess it's less good really interesting but anyway now they start debating over whether or not i was ugly and it's very funny he wasn't ugly before he was just average i think and then another person goes yeah but that's only because of his eye area he has good cantal tilt give him round brown eyes too and the jaw saves him <laughs> like saying that like if I had ugly eyes, then I would be really ugly, but then I would come back to average with a new chin. But because I have good eyes and now a good chin, I'm the most handsome man on earth, which I'm definitely not. Right? There's a lot more beautiful people out there and they didn't even need to get fucking surgery. They were just born like it. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, so funny. And then I just wrote like a big comment of like, hey guys, um, <laughs> someone goes, I... Th Surgery is cheating. You can't fix ugly genetics. Oh, leave me alone, all right? Leave me alone. <laughs> cheating what? This isn't a game. He is now attractive regardless. He was already lucky to have a face that could be fixed by surgery. <laughs> and like when you... What's really interesting about all these people, and it's very sad, seeing like someone post someone that's ugly, right? Or that they perceive to be ugly. And then seeing all these people like kind of debate over whether or not I was ugly. All that is, especially when you look at the other posts, it's very sad. People look at me or my before or anyone else and they go, he's not ugly. I'm ugly. He's not ugly. That's just a normal person. I'm an ugly person. But what those people don't realize is that when other people look at them, they would go, He's not ugly. That's just a normal guy. I'm ugly. And it's all like insecurity and self-hatred um, and anxiety and body dysmorphia because you look in the mirror and you see someone that is so much less attractive than what you actually are. Like if these people could step into the heads of other people in the street that walk past them, they probably wouldn't even get looked at or thought of or, you know, they think that people look at them and go, ugh. Yuck. Mm. But unfortunately for these people, um, the reality of the situation is people only ever go, oh, yuck, at severely disabled people. <laughs> and then we go, no, that's fine in our heads. And then we move on. <laughs> um, Yeah, it's just, it's very, very telling all of these people that are just like, I'm so ugly, it can't be fixed. But oh, on the last thing is, one person in this whole thing actually nailed it. <laughs> there was one comment that I was like, that's actually 100% reflective 
of my reality. So here we go. That's amazing, but I would not regard him as ugly before. At the very least, his side profile is unattractive, but nothing that would elicit random comments and harassment. <laughs> so who, the, who is so ugly that people are yelling them on the street? There's no fucking way. Like I, that's, re- I reckon that's some Quasimodo. Yeah, first I re- twenty minutes of Quasimodo movie shit. I reckon at school and stuff. That's yeah. I no. I I would say that that definitely happens. Yeah, at school. Yeah, yeah. That I feel like these. Yeah, all the. I reckon so many of these people are like fifteen to seventeen, and are just very very insecure. You're probably right, um, but not in the fucking adult world. And like reading through these comments, so many of them just don't leave the house because they're just scared of that happening. And it's like, that's probably not going to happen. Um, but anyway, so, but I did elicit random comments and shit on social media, but everyone gets it. Anyway, this is the comment that's 100% true. Yeah. He probably went from being ignored to getting double takes and stares of interest. Maybe even having some bashful reactions. <sighs> that's actually true. That's actually true as fuck. And it's really fucking freaking me out. I went out the other day and uh, normally people would look at me because I'm super tall. And they'll go, wow, tall guy. And then that would be it. Or some people would be like, oh, wow, that's Lewis Spears. But I have definitely been getting way more. No, I'm not being ogled, but I'm definitely getting smiled at by women <laughs> way more and by by more i mean i mean like more than zero <laughs> like i wasn't i was not getting smiled at by women unless they were like i like your videos it was just people like wow tall and then neutral they weren't like uh but they were just neutral but now i do get smiled at and also i have noticed that when I get served at shops by strangers, um, I get much, I, people are just a little, like quite a bit more friendlier. And I'm, I'm realizing that, because I don't think I'm fucking gorgeous. I don't think I'm super, super handsome, but I'm definitely more attractive than I was. And I'm really beginning to see the pretty privilege that's entering my life. Or maybe I had ugly disadvantage. I'm not so sure. And that's just gone away. I don't really know. But no one was throwing sticks and stones at me when I left the house. Like, get out of here, ugly. We don't want to look at you. Ugh. You have a recessed chin. Get out of here. Oh, I leave, no, I leave him alone. He's got a good cantle tilt. <laughs> leave him alone. He's got, a, he's got a positive cantle tilt. If it was negative, then we'd have to fucking hang him. But it's positive. Leave him alone. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. I just thought that was quite funny. Um... What, what else do we have to do here? Um, oh, okay. Before we get out of here, we have, <laughs> we've got one very important email. Now, do, what episode did oh, we yes. do this, uh, Keelan? If you, if you remember, there was a debate that was going on because we got an email from one of the listeners uh, to podcast at lewespears.com. If you need some life advice, if you have a story to tell us, if you have something that you would like me to talk about or just anything remotely amusing or funny or shocking or whatever you want to send through to the show... Send it through to podcast at lewespears.com. We need more questions. We need more stories. Um, and we had uh, one email from, uh, from a girl and it was titled, Are We the Assholes? It was episode 329, The Dark Side of Nickelodeon. Yeah. So go listen to the end of 329 to get the full email. But basically, <laughs> the, the, these people uh, emailed... And they said, we took a a friend called Karen. Uh, We went away for Karen's birthday. And we got Karen to pick a restaurant that we would go to for her birthday. And when we, we organized to go, we got all dressed up. And then we decided before we left, just before we left, to look at the menu online. And then we all decided it was too expensive and then she started crying because she was really excited for it. And everyone kind of seemed to make her feel like shit. Um, and uh, yeah, Karen started crying. None of us knew how to respond to this reaction. She started blabbering on about how she went with her parents and had the chicken and it was good. 
<laughs> After she stopped crying, I tried bringing up other options for dinner and she basically and basically got shut down. She eventually perked up, but as soon as my husband tried bringing up why she didn't want to talk about why she cried, she aggressively flipped him off. I <laughs> <laughs> I immediately looked at her crazy and asked and asked why she flipped him off. She immediately apologized. <laughs> That's so funny. Hey man, why why did you start crying before? <laughs> hey, why did you flip me off? I'm so sorry. I'm so That's such a funny reaction. It's not like, you know, everyone snapped at some like they say something and you get pissed off, but you're like say something, you know, and and you'll be like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." But so you get pissed off and, and your 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 gut reaction is <laughs> this bit is just for the video watchers of the, of the podcast. Like if you're listening on Spotify, open up the video option. I'll give you five seconds. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I'm so sorry. Sorry. <laughs> just just uh, just gut reaction immediately. Hey, why did you start crying before? <laughs> Oh, so I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do Like not even swearing, not saying anything, just <laughs> the full, the, the non-verbal flip of the bird is great. <laughs> I immediately looked at her crazy and asked why she flipped him off. She immediately apologized. I'm sorry. Um, only because I said something, I'm sure. We ended up going to dinner somewhere else. Uh, Karen is an only child who is used to getting her way clearly. <clears throat> now we read this and... We we cast a few doubts upon just the way this story was told. Just just because they called this girl Karen, which I felt like she was trying to discredit her character before we even started reading it. And then also just we looked at the prices uh, uh, and, and we, we couldn't see how expensive it was. So we were like, what is expensive? Um, That's right. Oh, no, sorry. They sent us the prices and they didn't seem to be so expensive at all and we were like how is this expensive <laughs> this seems to be like a fairly reasonably priced restaurant like it wasn't <laughs> hundreds of dollars it was like you know it wasn't like it wasn't 30 dollars meals it was like 40 60 dollars meals but it's not like crazy it's not so expensive that you just would not go out so they've sent an update and we were like we just need more information we feel like maybe there's more to this story that you're leaving out that might make you look like a bit of a villain is basically what we said. We're not saying that Karen's completely innocent, but we're just not sure. So, and we were also like, why didn't you look at the menu beforehand if it wasn't a big deal? Like everyone got ready and mm. then they looked at the menu and then they were like, no, we're not going, which is rude, especially for a birthday dinner, you know? Anyway, follow up email, update, I'll be the assholes. I definitely don't discredit the fact that we failed to look at the menu beforehand. Full stop. That's absolutely on us. Full stop. I feel like we've lost a listener. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've lost a listener. I was like, uh, are you sure you didn't contribute to this in some small way? Um, fuck you. I'm never listening again. <laughs> You know what this is? This is me now discrediting their character. Watch us read this email and they'll 100% be in the right. I haven't read this yet. Okay, so clarifying. Those are American prices. So I have a hard time justifying $50 plus US for a half chicken when I can go buy a whole chicken at the store for under $20. 20 US for a chicken? That's like $30. That's crazy. Aren't chickens... Chickens at the no. supermarket are like nine to twelve bucks. I'm pretty sure Costco have them at, in America for five bucks. Don't they? I don't know. I've never I've never been. Should we go? <laughs> um <laughs> I have a hard time justifying fifty dollars for half a chicken when I can go buy a whole chicken at the store for under twenty dollars. Look, I don't know your financial situation, but like, yeah, I've like it but it might be a really nice chicken. Like half, like it's not, when I go out to a restaurant, I'm not like, I'm not, if it's a special occasion, I'm not, I'm not thinking about quantity of food. I know what the problem is. They're really fat. No, that's too much. All right. These are American prices, but, but you know what? No, $50. That's like $70. That is expensive. 
<clears throat> but, that's quite expensive but, for a meal. And I think we talked about this last time. If you know you're going out for dinner with your friend, it's a birthday. Just suck it. But up. yeah, seventy dollars a meal for a birthday dinner isn't crazy expensive. Yeah. Um, and it obviously means a lot to your friend. Yeah. When she was listening to us, oh, and that's right. They were talking downstairs about how expensive it was and how much they did not want to go. And then the friend came downstairs crying. So I was like, what was actually said when she wasn't in the room? Like, were you actually just going, oh, this seems a bit expensive. I don't know if we knew. Or were they going, is this bitch fucking crazy? Does she think we have $50 for a fucking chicken? I can go down to Costco and get a whole chicken for 20 bucks. Stupid bitch. Fuck her birthday. You know, what was actually being said? When she was listening to us talk, we were talking about how it was expensive, but that wasn't the issue. The issue was the options. We knew that she wanted to go and have the chef's choice meal, which we were all skeptical of because you don't know what it is until you get there. The, <laughs> the get something else. <laughs> get a different meal at the restaurant. <laughs> this... The other couple who brought their two teeth... You know what? I'm only halfway through this email and I feel like everyone's the problem. I feel like birthday girl overreacted and put way too much weight on this restaurant. I feel like people who wanted to go didn't actually want to do anything for her. They just wanted to go to a cheap restaurant that night. Mm. We, uh, The other couple had brought their two teenage daughters. Yeah, because what if we get the chef special and they and they and and it costs... Fifty dollars, and they serve us something that I could get. They they give me a carrot when I know I can get a carrot from Costco for twenty cents. <laughs> what if they charge me seven dollars for an entree when I know that I can get garlic and butter and carrots for like two dollars <laughs> and spend and then go home and cut it up and 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 clean the the skillet and then heat it up and then cook it myself and then serve it to myself and then eat it and it only takes about thirty minutes. <laughs> um. We knew that she wanted to go and have the chef's choice meal because we were all skeptical of because you don't know what it is until you get there. The other couple had brought their two teenage daughters and they were saying how they wouldn't eat the stuff on the menu, which was honestly the main reason we didn't go there. All right, so now it's changed. Before it was too expensive. Now it's yucky. The whole time, my husband was trying to get her to talk about her feelings. When she tried to storm out of the room, he stopped it by saying, you're just going to leave and not talk about it? (laughs) Okay, this doesn't seem like a very emotionally mature friend group. Yeah. Like, she's storming out of the room, which maybe isn't very good. But then he's going, oh, so you're just like, was he going, was he going? Because here's, here's the thing. There's, there's, so they storm out and I go, oh, no, please come back. I'm, I'm sorry that I've hurt your feelings, but I, I'd re- I would really like to talk about this. Can can we try and resolve this and and maybe figure out? what's gone wrong so we so I can avoid hurting your feelings in future. I really, I, I'm i sorry that you're upset. I'm sorry I've upset you. But I really would like to talk about this so we can figure out what's going on. Or did he go, oh, you're not, you're going to walk away and not talk about it? Are you really going to walk away and cry? Talk about your feelings in front of me, my four friends, and their two <laughs> teenage children. Pussy. I get a chicken for $20 from Costco, you bitch. (laughs) After that, it was just a back and forth from them both of, I don't want to talk about it, from Sarah. I love that I changed Karen's name to Sarah and she's done that. So she's not totally unreasonable from Sarah. And why don't you want to talk about it from my husband? Then Sarah flipped him off. He never said anything further than that. Hopefully that helps. Maybe we are the assholes. Mm. I feel like, I feel like, you know what I feel like? I've read this and my worst faith interpretation of you and my best faith interpretation of you leads me to the same conclusion. You guys shouldn't be friends. Yeah. Is that's, that's what this is, is it seems like the actual problem is you guys probably don't really like each other, you know? Because I feel like we've all we've all been there where we've, we've like, let's do this. Like, oh, it's expensive. But I really like you, so let's do it. Yeah. Oh, that's expensive. And you're a fucking bitch. No. 
Like that's, is that not the issue? I feel like you guys shouldn't be friends. And, and also, um, your husband hates it and she hates it. Your husband and they, they're having a big back and forth. Why don't you want to talk about it? I don't want to talk about it. Come on. Let's talk about it. No. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> Visual joke for the listener. <laughs> Why did you flip my husband off? I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't like your husband and he doesn't like her either. That's, that's the issue is those two fucking hate each other. And you're just in the middle going, ah, can't we just get a chicken from Costco? <laughs> That's so funny. Imagine, imagine it's like it's 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 my birthday. And I'm like, hey man, let's let's go out to uh, let's go out to dinner. And you're like, what? Shouldn't we just get like a whole chicken from Coles? <laughs> no, no, we shouldn't. You fucking animal. That's so that's so funny. Your fu- <laughs> your fucking animal mate is like, oh, should we go out for dinner for my birthday? No, let's eat a whole chicken from the supermarket with our hands. On the kitchen table. That'd be so much better. Don't you think that'd be better? And and it's only like nine bucks. We can split it. That's $4.50 each. And you're like, dude, it's my birthday. And you're like, I know. How good would this be? Oh, Keel is laughing so much. He's tipped the fucking light over. All right. That's the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening. We're going to continue over on Patreon here. Uh, for for the this week's Patreon episode, me and Keelan are going to eat a whole chicken with our hands. <laughs> In silence while flipping the camera off. All right. We're going to do that on Patreon right now. Uh, <laughs> subscribe, oh. grab tickets to uh, Brisbane and a bunch of other shows, loosebeers.com. I'll talk to you then. Have a shit one. Bye. <laughs>